casting a resin and rigid foam pattern from a life cast mold. Now this is a little bit of a sneak peek of a uh, small part of a big project that I'm working on uh, for some medical simulator applications, but uh, more about that in some videos uh, probably later on in the year. But uh, what I did here is I cast up part of a life cast and then trim this down and I'm going to be uh, cleaning this up for use as a pattern for a medical simulator. Now this is a spin-off of the video that I did earlier showing how I did this with my head but I slosh cast that using TC-808 and then back that up with rigid foam. And that makes a very tough impact resistant copy that uh, you can use as a sculpting form or an archivable pattern. But uh, if you miss that, definitely check out the previous tutorial where I cast up that head and I go over all the uh, mold considerations and everything in that particular video. Now, the head that I cast up was a similar application, but this one's just enough different to warrant a separate video. Now, when I cast up that head, I just sloshed that around and made a hollow copy with resin and then filled it with foam. But this time around, since I'm using a life cast mold, and this, of course, is a life cast mold that I did on our friend Danny, I will just be casting up just a portion of the inside of this mold, just that uh, right breast and shoulder. And because I want to get just that area of the mold, I want to make the resin brushable for this application. And again, for this, we'll be using the TC-808 polyurethane resin. This is a fast setting polyurethane resin. And of course, that B-side will settle out. You want to make sure you shake that B-side up really well before each use. And of course, this resin mixes one to one by weight. And what I'm going to be doing here, different than the, uh, the head that I made where I sloshed that around and made a hollow copy, is this time around I'll be weighing out my resin and then I'm going to be thickening it with fiber thick. So here I'm just measuring out equal parts of TC-808, parts A and B. And then once I've got my resin measured out, then I'm ready to add the thickener to that. And you want to move fast because this is a fairly fast setting resin. So you'll notice that I transition immediately from thickening this to dumping this in the mold. You'll see that here in just a second. But fiber thick thickener, this is a really nice thickener to use, a lot safer than Cabasil, doesn't suspend in the air like fume silica does. And you just add this a handful at a time until you get the thickness that you want. It's an inert material, so it doesn't change the chemistry, but obviously you can add so much that it's almost unworkable. So just add it a handful at a time until you get the thickness that you want. And you can take that anywhere from a light paste consistency all the way up to a frosting or dough-like consistency. And here I wanted a nice thick brushable paste. You'll see that thickness there using valuable time just to show you, dear viewer, exactly how thick you want that. Now, this is a really important step. You notice I'm dumping that out of the mixing bucket into the life cast mold. Now, by spreading out the material as soon as possible, we get the maximum amount of working time. Again, this is a fast setting material. This has about a two and a quarter minute working time and about a 10 to 20 minute demold, depending on the cross section. So I wanna make sure that I get this dumped out of that mixing bucket and spread out because when it's in a thick mass, that will act as an accelerant for the resin. So just having it in a thick mass will kick it off much faster than when it's spread out across a large open face mold. So really important there to get that out of the mixing bucket into our mold and then spread out. And because this is a paste consistency, I'm not worried about dumping it in the mold and having it just spill out everywhere. And then you can kind of scrub that resin into the mold to make sure you capture that surface detail really well. And one of the reasons I'm using the, the 808 versus a slower setting material is TC-808 is very moisture resistant. So it's excellent for these kinds of applications where I don't want to risk uh, any kind of moisture contamination from ambient humidity or anything in the mold. So it's just a lot easier to use and a, a lot better consistent results anytime you're working in an area where there might be ambient humidity. Now, this will set up really fast. You see it's starting to get a little draggy, a little uh, 
uh, sticky there. And as soon as it does that, I need to leave it alone and I'm going to mix up another batch. Now, the reason I'm doing this in two layers is so it'll not have a nice, consistent, bright white surface. If I don't do this, there's going to be some of those areas where you can see that orange life cast silicone through the resin. And when that's flipped over, you would see some of that foam through the resin. Not the end of the world because really this isn't going to be a, a cosmetic part, but just for the eye, for being able to see the pattern when I'm sculpting on it and working it, it's much nicer to have a clean white surface to work with and just makes cleanup and sanding and everything else a lot easier to track and monitor. Now, again, once I hit that stage where the resin is starting to get a little bit grabby, it starts to get kind of sticky and gummy, you want to leave it alone as soon as that happens. If you keep messing with it too much, you can start picking it up with the brush and peeling away what you've just put down. Now, this time I'm actually going to let the resin set up for a little bit. And now we're going to be backing that with TC300 six pound density rigid foam. So I let that sit for about an hour and now we're coming back with the foam to back it up. The reason I let that resin sit for about an hour is so it's nice and strong and I don't have to worry about the foam, the pressure from that expanding foam, distorting that resin skin that I brushed into the mold. Now TC300 is again mixed one to one by weight just like TC808. And this is a rigid foam, an expanding foam that expands about 10 times the original volume. And this is six pound density. So it has a nice low density kind of a wood like uh, feel in the end product. And much like the TC808, you want to move fast, get your resin mixed up really well. And again, once that's stirred up properly, ready to dump that in, out in the mold. And then I'm going to use a throwaway brush to uh, push that around the resin surface. And the reason I'm doing that is rigid foam has a slower expansion rate than flexible foam. So I have a little bit more working time to get that foam spread out and distributed across the back of that resin. So that's where brushing really comes in handy. And again, just brushing that across the back of the foam ensures that I don't have any gaps behind that foam that could create distortions. So just brushing that in and smearing that all over the inside and then allowing that to expand just gets me a lot more a uniform surface where the, the foam meets that resin surface. Because you can have some kind of weird distortions occur sometimes if you get a gap of air or a bubble of air between the resin and the expanding foam. And because the foam is putting off heat, it can cause that air to expand and create some funky spots on your pattern. Now this is one more batch of rigid foam that I'm going to do exactly the same thing. And this time around I didn't have to wait as long. Um, I only waited about 15 minutes to mix this batch up and pour it on the back. And the back of this doesn't need to be perfect, but I want it to have enough substance to it to help me with uh, sculpting the medical simulator later on. Because ultimately I'll be adding clay to the sides and the back and the top of this to finish this out and give kind of a stylized section of the human form. But again, more about that in a video later on. Now you can't see it from this angle, but I usually put down a large trash bag, a polypropylene trash bag on my floor under my work table. And that way those little drips of foam don't stick to my linoleum floor. And that is an important consideration because rigid foam wants to stick to pretty much everything in the same zip code. So be very careful about whatever it comes in contact with. And once again, much like the resin, when it starts to get kind of grabby, it's time to leave it alone and let it expand the rest of the way and demold our pattern. Now the back side looks pretty rough, but that's the side that I'll be building up over that with clay later on. So again, more about that in a future video. But now ready to carefully demold our silicone life cast. And this is a self-releasing silicone formula, so it doesn't have as high a tear strength as some other formulas, but it does self-release beautifully. So we're just gonna carefully remove that from our positive. And now we can do a lot of our cleanup work that we need to do to get that stylized form 
just with woodworking tools. A handsaw like this works great for trimming up parts like this. Also a wood rasp that you might have seen me use in previous tutorials works great for this. And one of the other details that I didn't bring up at the beginning of the video is I actually cast this part obviously bigger than I actually needed it so that I could do exactly what I'm doing here. Cut this off and get these nice straight edges on what will ultimately become an anatomical model. So more about that to follow, but in the meantime, you get the idea. Woodworking tools work great for trimming hard resin and hard foam. And now I have a form that I can start sculpting on, modify, I can add Bondo to that. I can do all kinds of things to clean that up and adjust it to my liking. And of course, as always on these videos, the silicones, the foams, the pigments that I typically use are available from bjbmaterials.com. So be sure to check those out. I will put links to the foam and the resin that I used in this video in the video description. So definitely check that out. And of course, here on the end screen, be sure to check out the other tutorials relative to pattern work and other resin casting applications. As always, thanks for watching and supporting the channel.